Hello and welcome to the vlog, which this time sees me continuing my journey up the River Avon. I had a very quiet night on the bank at Combaton Quay and was now heading towards the small market town of Pershaw, which dates from medieval times, its abbey being founded in the year 689. The weather, which was so fine the day before, had turned a bit drizzly, hence the blobs on the video, but this cleared up fairly soon. The guidebook lists a small free mooring up ahead, but it's confusingly between two stretches of private moorings, so isn't necessarily obvious. Those cruisers are all on the private ones, which belong to Kingfisher Marine. I think I'm right in saying these triple moored narrowboats are on the free one, but I wouldn't swear to that. As you head down the long strait towards the bottom of Pershaw, there are more moorings, but again, like so much on the river, these are privately owned, of which you're left in no doubt. If you want to stop in town though, fear not, there are two main places. Firstly, these ones on the picnic area and another set further along. Note the blue marker posts which indicate they belong to the Avon Navigation Trust and are free. Immediately after those you go under the new bridge, apparently the first concrete bridge built in Worcestershire, and then the old Great Bridge which dates from the 14th century. Then it's time to do another lock. Take the right fork here or you'll end up at the weir. Then you bear left and up to the lock. There was, as you can see, some work going on here. Not quite sure what they were doing, but they were very careful to keep out of my way as I approached, which was kindly and useful. Look, there's me on the lock, opening the gates. This lock is unusual on the Avon in being, I think, the only one with a ground paddle to let the water in. The rest just have gate paddles. All of the locks are incredibly turbulent, so be warned. Also, they carefully hide the mechanism behind the big sign that says you must use it first, and I'm not alone in having had to hunt for the wretched thing. This I found quite interesting two reverse Archimedes screws over the weir to generate electricity, although only one appears to be in use. Nice to see small-scale hydroelectric. There's the rest of the water, overspilling. Scope for a few more screws there, maybe. Now, honestly, would you look for the ground paddle behind that sign on the grass? One glorious thing for the solo boater is that on the river you aren't supposed to shut the lock gates behind you, so no need to stop, tie up and go back when you've come out of the lock. It's wonderful, such a time saver. Past the overflow and then past the water leading to that generator, but the river's so low I couldn't feel any pull to the side as I went past. This is the start of the second set of town moorings that I mentioned earlier, a long stretch owned by the Trust. There are some private ones just before this, but it's pretty clear which ones are which. And there's Pump Out, Elsan and a Waste Point here too. As you can see, the moorings stretch on for a good way, and if you want to stop in Pershaw, it's got quite a bit of history and all the usual town amenities. I don't know what this is, but you're supposed to avoid it. The approach to wire lock is quite grand, with private moorings and ahead the old grist mill that's been converted into a social club by supporters of the Avon Navigation Trust. Here's the downstream approach past the weirs, which try to push you sideways. Luckily then, the lock landing is on the far side and the current helps to put you on it. When I arrived there was a group of children in kayaks going up, so I had a bit of a wait, but it meant I could study the lock because it's a bit weird. Specifically, it's diamond shaped, which makes it very awkward to tie the boat, and the poor thing crashed around mightily as the water came in, though by the point I filmed this it had calmed down rather. 
I don't know why it's this shape, but that's history for you. Like many of the locks on the Avon, this one has free mooring on the other side as you exit, so I took advantage of that and paused for the afternoon and overnight. Good morning. Let's press on and see if we can get either to or even past Evesham today. The village up ahead is Wire, and there was a very interesting house on the side of the river, about which I know absolutely nothing, but it does look rather Shakespearean. For some reason, I felt these trees seemed to be alive. It must be the hair, I think. I kept expecting them to move or wave or something. What a cool place to have a little hut. The river up to Jubilee Bridge is shallow on the right, apparently, hence why I'm on the wrong side here. It also means I'm coming up to Fladbury Lock and there are strict instructions about the approach. Specifically, you're supposed to look ahead here and make sure there's no one coming around the right-hand curve from the lock, as it's only wide enough for one boat. That would be great if the trees didn't totally obscure the view. All I could do was venture in slowly and hope not to meet anyone. It really is a bizarre set of instructions since you can't possibly obey them. Luckily, no one was coming and I made it round to the lock. Having opened the gates, in I went. The river level was so low it didn't even register on the green part of the scale. A very pretty view of Fladbury Mill and the Weir, Fladbury Village once being the home of William Sands, who first began to make the river navigable in 1636. Coming out of the lock you encounter Fladbury Canoe Club, all getting ready to take to the water. If canoeing's not your thing, maybe 18 holes at the town golf course. This is Crakeham Turn, with moorings you can use if there's a space. It's all very rural here between Pershaw and Evesham. That is the Wood Norton, a 19th century manor house, now a hotel. The BBC has training facilities there too. Goodness me, another one of these. That can only mean I'm coming up to the next lock at Chadbury. There it is, and another boat already in there, kindly waiting for me to join them. It's always easier when there's someone else with you, although the churning of the lock did rather crash our boats together a bit. Very shortly there's a chain ferry going from one side of the river to the other, and as you approach you're supposed to give three short blasts on the horn to say you're coming, and then the chain gets lowered to the bottom of the river, I don't know if it's chain or rope, whatever it is, gets lowered so you can go over it. I think as I'm fairly close to the boat in front, the one I just shared a lock with, that they will do the tooting of the horn and we'll probably both go through at the same time or near enough. Those houses signal I'm approaching the outskirts of Evesham, another historic town dating back hundreds of years. Up ahead is the rope ferry crossing although it's really rather hard to spot. As I'd opened up a gap to the boat ahead, I decided I should signal as I approached. You can just see where it comes out, in that slight indent in the riverbank on the left. Having signalled my approach, the little ferry stayed put, though as I got closer I could see a passenger waiting to cross on the other side, as well as the rope dipping into the water. The river now begins a long, long sweeping U-turn around the bottom of the town and there's an interesting mix of houses, boats and so on to look at as you go. A huge park sits on the inside of the turn, there's a leisure centre up there somewhere as well. 
and as you start to edge back up the east side of town, you go under Abbey Bridge, which was rebuilt three years ago. There are some truss moorings along here which you can use, but don't confuse them with these ones, which are private. Those are the truss moorings, and as you can see from the tall poles, they're flood safe too. Evesham really does look quite delightful, that park continuing all the way round on the left, and another workman gardens on the right, with again more moorings, though these would get swamped if the river rose much. That's a little sightseeing boat just going past on the left. There's the town's rowing club, with a glimpse of Evesham Bell Tower in the distance. and up to Workman Bridge, which dates from 1856 and was named after a mayor of Evesham. Silt from dredging the river at that time was used to make Workman Gardens, which were still passing on the right. Evesham Lock is quite a substantial thing, with a massive weir on the right, an old mill house which you can't see here on the left, and the lock in the middle. The other boat I was following is waiting not just for me, but for another boat which is coming down the lock. Eventually it was our turn, and look how odd this lock is, because the walls are curved, which makes it a devil to get out of from your boat when trying to reach the lock ladder, as it's smack in the middle of the curve and you therefore have to reach for it, which is not really safe. If you thought the previous locks were a bit violent when letting the water in, this one is in another league. Look what happens when we crack the paddle open by the tiniest amount. If your boat's up the front and your well deck isn't covered and the bow doors shut, you are probably in for another soaking inside. And the turbulence was astronomical, even with two boats, which normally means you haven't got much space to move. Because of the lock shape, we both crashed about despite having put ropes on. Out, rather shaken, and past that massive weir which has this giant barrier for downstream boats to wait on. That's Evesham Marina on the right. And those are some random horses I spotted up on the hill. I'm following that other boat still, as we're both going to moor at Offenham Lock if there's space. It should only be an hour or so away, but for some reason it felt like it took forever to get there. The lock is ahead. It looks like an abrupt left turn, but it's actually not that bad. On the other side of this is space for several boats to stop for the night. The lock has a nice memorial on the side to a chap who put in a whole load of effort into restoring the Avon to navigable state. There's a bench dedicated to him as well, where you can sit and watch the boats go through. As promised, extensive moorings on both sides and a facilities point as well. Here's where I stopped and the vlog will end too. Cheerio!